Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at anchoring, which isn't something you might do a lot of on a catamaran, and mooring, which we certainly do quite a lot here at Wildwind. This is an anchor. Um, okay, let's have a look, see what we're gonna do. Okay, so firstly, with the actual apparatus that's necessary, um, this is a, called a folding grapnel anchor, which looks like this. This is the right sort of anchor if you are gonna take one on your catamaran, because it's the least bulky, and obviously it folds up, and you're less likely to put it through the trampoline. And then this will open, like this and then there we are there's our anchor ready to deploy in fact i think we'll leave it out ready to deploy okay and then the length of the rope that we want should be about double the depth of the water if you want your boat to hold really nicely um if not even longer the longer the rope that you can carry the better um for a catamaran if it's not particularly windy you don't need rope as thick as this a bit of six mil uh should hold your boat uh quite adequately also attach the anchor we've just got some chain that's gonna help to for the anchor to bed in to the bottom now some types of seabed are better for anchoring than others uh, so here in Vasiliki we've got a sandy bottom which is okay or a mud bottom is good for anchoring but a rocky bottom is less good you can still do it but it's not ideal I know you've only got the bottom that you've got that's what you've got okay so I've already got the rope out and one other preparation that I've made is I've actually passed the capsized writing line through this loop that we have attached to the bridle wires. So we can see we've got a loop of rope here. Capsized writing line is coming through here. And we're actually gonna attach the anchor line to the capsized writing line. And that just means that we're not gonna to have to come up to the front of the boat to deploy the anchor. Okay, so I've already stopped just by easing the sails and putting the boat into the wind before before deploying the anchor even if it's not going to be the right length it's a good idea to tie the anchor line onto the boat so that we don't risk losing it so i'm just going to tie the end of the anchor line just around the front beam here just as a precaution using a bowline check out the video on knots if you haven't seen that one if you need some help with your knots okay and now we can deploy the anchor and i'm just gonna i haven't anchored a catamaran i don't know if i've ever done it at all but i'm just gonna drop the anchor from this position making sure it's not going anywhere near the hulls and once all the chain's in, because the end of the rope's tied on, I'm just gonna make sure that the rope isn't in a mess. And the wind is coming up a bit. It's probably about 14 knots at the moment, but it's gonna get stronger, because that's what it does here. So if you want your boat to hold better, the longer the amount of rope that you put out, is gonna mean that your boat is gonna hold better. And then actually what I'm gonna do is use all of the rope that we have. But before I get to the end, I'm just gonna tie this on to the capsized writing line. Tying another bowline, but with this end doubled. And then what that does is means that I'll, when we want to pull it up, I'll be able to pull it up using 
the rope here. So now she's taking, we can see the anchor is going out there. The anchor rope is going forwards. So then we'll just give that a couple of seconds, maybe 20 seconds uh, to give it a chance to bite in. And then once it's had that chance, we can then use something on land to check to see if we're holding. So here we are, we're coming around into the wind. That is nice. Okay, so now we'll look for something on the land that we can line up. So you won't be able, probably won't be able to see this in the video, but there is, what have we got? We want something closer on the land and then something a bit more distant. So what we've actually got on the mountain is one of these tracks where there's a clear corner and below that there is quite a distinctive building and I'm just going to keep an eye on those for about 30 seconds just to make sure that the way that they line up now is the same. If the building in the foreground starts moving uh, forwards compared to the uh, landmark in the background, that means that we're drifting backwards and our anchoring has not been particularly successful. So in that event, putting out more line might help or perhaps going for shallower water. This is what's called taking a transit. So we're looking, we're looking, and that looks good. So yes, we have successfully anchored our Hobie 16. Oh, joy of joys. Um, what a great day this is. Uh, it will go down in the history books. So what we're gonna do next, we're not gonna pull the anchor up as the next part of this feature, but what we're gonna do so that we can go through mooring is we're actually going to turn our anchor rope into a mooring um, so that we can look at how we're going to moor the boat. So what I'm going to do is untie this bowline off the front and then I'm going to tie the bowline back in and I have actually brought with us today a boy which I'm just gonna clip on there. And then I'm just gonna pull this in so that we can release from the line here. So I'll just untie this and then we should be good to release. And there we go, we're released. So our anchor line has now become, just popping out under the hull. So our anchor line has now become a mooring because there's a buoy on it. I'm just a little bit untidily leaving. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm gonna pull that in because we can't go sailing with a rope dangling like this. That would be quite, unseaman like there we go we'll pull him back onto the boat let's keep the boat tidy when we can so there's our mooring so when we're approaching a mooring it doesn't matter if it's a mooring or perhaps a man overboard or perhaps you want to go alongside something you should always approach on a close reach. The close reach um, is the best point of sail to approach something on because on the close reach, you can slow the boat down by letting the sails off, but you can also slow the boat down by heading up into the wind. So we want to get to a point where we're on a close reach away from that mooring so I'm just going to sail away from it a bit 
um, as the wind is stronger, giving yourself a bit more space for the approach is always going to be helpful. So we're sailing away from the buoy on a beam reach. And then what we're gonna do is go for a jive. Okay, we've jived round. Oh, watch out for the jib wrap. Okay, we've got the jib wrap. Do check out the video on how to avoid the jib wrap. I should have watched that one first. Okay, and we've actually come quite a lot further down than intended. So far, in fact, I can't see our mooring. Um, just scanning for the mooring. Oh yeah, I see it. Right, we're gonna have to tack to get to the mooring, but that's okay. Because this is the sort of thing that could happen. So we need to know what to do. So I'm gonna bear off a little bit again so that we can approach the mooring from a bit more space on the close reach. So I'm gonna go past, the mooring is just on about 90 degrees there. Okay, just giving it more space. And, okay, I'm gonna head up and tack there. Pulling the main sheet in going across the boat it's okay the rudder's reversed but that's okay because we're going backwards a little bit okay now let's let the jib off completely we don't want to have to worry about that okay so the the mooring is now i'd say it's pretty much a close reach away i'm going to let the traveler off a bit so we've got a little bit more control and now the mooring is pretty much on the nose and here we can just sheet in to go faster or sheet out slow down okay and what we're going to do with the mooring is we're going to put it in between the hulls if it was a man overboard we'd take it on the windward side just because the risk of hitting your man overboard on the head with the dolphin striker the hull or the rudder is significant okay so we're coming up just feathering the main sheet keeping our speed down and we want to stop the boat mostly by sheeting out but we can of course turn it into the wind a bit as well so i'm going to put the boy where i can grab it which is just there grabbed and then what we could do now that we've grabbed it is take it forwards, clip it on to our mooring loop that we have here. Uh, for all of our boats, we put these loops on and then I'll clip it onto the bridle wire as well. That's double security. And now there we are. She's sitting very nicely on the mooring there. And we can see our transit is still good. So now, I think we'll go for another approach, but we'll approach from upwind. Okay, so I'm gonna take us off the mooring. To get us off the mooring, I'm actually gonna pull the mooring back to the boat a bit. And what that's gonna do is, that, is actually going to get us to bear away. As I go towards the back, the boat will bear away and we'll actually use the mooring to start sailing and dropping there. Okay, so we're gonna just sail upwind a little bit to see how we're gonna go about this approach from upwind. More champagne sailing conditions here today. Um, nobody out yet at the moment as well which just really gives us the whole bay to play with uh, so it does seem a little bit wasteful not being out on the trapeze with a GPS but I think this is quite a valuable 
thing to be doing and with a bit of wind it does add a bit of value I think to the procedure. Okay so we're a little way up wind of the boy now so we'll tack round just to add realism to this just checking everywhere make sure that we're not going to have a terrible time. Okay and the jib is in on the wrong side now I've got to look for the boy again spotting the boy oh yeah I've seen it it is pretty much downwind of our current position so what I'm gonna do is um, gonna take her off downwind some big chop here okay and again we want to be a close approaching on that close reach so the boy is up here so i'm sailing pretty much dead downwind here just so that we can get that good approach up to the boy okay of course this is gonna have another element involved if you have got tide all right so i'm heading up there or oh. and there we are this is good, now I could just sheet in. If we had to point higher, I could pull the traveler in as well. But we're looking pretty good here. And I'm gonna scuttle forwards to collect the boy. And there we are, we would clip that on again. So now I'm gonna pull the anchor up. I think this should be, apart from there's quite a lot of rope here, which means it's gonna take a minute. Um, apart from that this should be pretty straightforward but what we want to make sure is that we're not going to drag the tray the chain or the anchor across the fiberglass of the hull which would of course be bad so i'm just taking this in the middle the sails are loose the boat is still going to be sat quite nicely into the wind bringing her in alternating from hands over the top hands underneath the rope just to work different muscle groups as we pull this in okay so there's the chain I'm not going to drag it over the front beam as well because that will scratch it of course Whoa. okay we've caught a bit of seaweed very nice now we're going to fold her up and there we go so that is done and done so there we are i hope that was useful in some way um we're now going to go and actually have a look at the moorings that we use here at wildwind uh where we moor the boats so that if you want to make a permanent mooring you could do something similar to what we do which is a very practical solution um, yeah so let's go and have a look at that so here is what we use at Wildwind for our moorings we use a fairly decent sized car tire which is then filled with concrete and we use two different styles but with this style there's a piece of chain set into the concrete and the other style that we use instead of chain is we put a piece of plastic tube through the middle of the concrete so then we could put a rope through that tube which goes onto the mooring then onto the chain here we've got a shackle spliced onto the shackle we've got this rope this is a 12 mil three strand rope and then the rope is about twice or two and a half times the depth of the water and then coming down to the end of the rope we've then got a buoy and then the other side of the buoy we just have a carabiner clip spliced on and that's what we'll clip onto the mooring loop 
on the boat. Very effective and uh, that's what we've been using here for many years. So there we go. Um, that hopefully should be everything that you need to know for now about anchoring or mooring your catamaran. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give the video a like if you liked it. Um, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed because there's more great stuff coming up soon on Joyrider TV pretty much every day. Thank you very much.